Hey guys, it's Paul from Ash Phoenix. I'm alive! I'm alive! It is a new comic book day for the week of December 20th. We're going to get started right now. Happy Holidays, Happy Merry Christmas, Merry Hanukkah. This is the last day of Hanukkah for you guys. Uh, yeah. If it's not, if you don't believe in any of this kind of stuff, have a great day. Um, but yeah, we're going to start right now. Hey guys, Tim from Capes and Scales, and I'm going to tell you what trades came out this week. We've got... Green Lanterns, Volume 4? Yes, 4. I've been reading this. We've got Girl Scouts, Magic Socks. I did review one issue one of this. It is weird. If you really like things weird, here you go. This one's weird. We've got Silver Age Teen Titans, Volume 1. Uh, I've read some of the Silver Age Teen Titans and issues, and it's probably a lot of fun if you like nostalgia and old school comic books. We got Deadly Class, Volume 6. It's a Remender book, so it's probably awesome. I've read Volume 1. It's going to be a show on sci-fi. You should check it out. We've got Secret Weapons, Volume 1, from uh, Valiant. Valiant's really been doing good as of late, so you should check that out. We have Fables, Ever After, Volume 2. I think this is the end of that series, because it didn't do as good. Because the guy who created Fables didn't write it. Ooh. We've got Justice League vs. Suicide Squad. I know a lot of these issues were tougher to get when they came out. We didn't expect it to be a hit. I don't think anybody expected it to be that big of a hit. So you can read the whole thing right here. We've got Detective Comics Volume 4. That other Bat book. Ha <laughs> ha. You like that book still, right? I really do. Alright, we got Batman Arkham Joker's Daughter. This is going to have some of her newer stuff, but it also has some old stuff. Uh, her original appearance was in Bat Family, I do believe. Oh, Batman yeah, Family. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. We've got Hawkeye, Kate Bishop Hawkeye, Volume 2. We've got Wonder Woman, The True Amazon. This was an Eisner Award winning hardcover. It's first time in softcover by Jill Thompson. We've got Black Hammer, Volume 2. This is a Lemire book? Question mark? Yes, Jeff Lemire who is awesome because he wrote Moon Knight that one time. And we've got a new printing of Parker, Richard Starks' Parker, with art by Darwin Cook. If you haven't read these, they're really fantastic. They're nothing like that Jason Statham movie that's kind of boring. Um, this is great. Oh, and I've got two more things. I've got a giant-sized Seven to Eternity volume, or issues one and two. It's awesome. Jerome Pena art. It's just crazy good. You should be reading this book. I'm giving it all away for free. Look at this. <laughs> and one more thing. Da -da 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 -da. We've got X-Men 1992 Jim Lee art box. Hopefully I twisted it around in a way that you can see the whole thing. So come get that box. It rules. All right, guys. First up, we have Backaways issue number one from Aftershock Comics. I'm mixed on this one. The art is great. I love the art. The writing is fantastic. The problem is, the story doesn't really go anywhere. Um, it's a very quick-moving story, and it doesn't really spend enough time building what's going on. We have a main character who is uh, looking for her friend who was kidnapped into a supernatural reality, and we don't know... Uh, what's going on, but she seems to know way more than she knows or she's supposed to know. Like I said, the writing is um, a little too fast. They didn't spend enough time on this. I'd imagine the second issue is going to be fine. I might check that out just because I like the art and the writing is solid enough, or at least the dialogue uh, between characters is solid enough to get me through to a second issue. But this one's kind of tough. So um, if you want to pick it up, go for it. I'm not recommending it. But we'll see how issue number two goes. All right, guys, we're starting off with Valiant. We're starting with Quantum and Woody. And Quantum and Woody is a really fun book. I love the other issues, the other trades. I recommend you go get them. Uh, this continues some of the adventures of Quantum and Woody where they are. Uh, Quantum is getting selected by the government to work with them, and Woody is not. And uh, for obvious reasons, that being that Woody's kind of a dumbass. And he's it puts, he's kind of a racist too. He, an, a, a dumb, 
unknowing racist. He's not an intentional racist. He's just a dumbass racist. Um, basically, they don't, they don't want him, and it puts a strain on their relationship. And you find out some really cool things. I don't want to spoil here, but this is a good continuation of the story of Quan and Woody. If you enjoyed the rest, this is more of the same. You'll enjoy it. Next up, Invincible 143. What? Next up, we have Evolution issue number two. Um, I read the first one. It seems late. It seems like it's only it's been more than a month since I've reviewed the first one. It just has to have. Uh, but that's Image. Image can be late sometimes. Just, just the way things are. Uh, the second issue is way better than the first. I will say that there is a lot of action that goes on and a lot of the storyline progresses way more than it did the first time around. Um, I really like how this is going, even though I'm not a fan of the art. Um, it's very liney. It's very dark. It fits the story. It's just not something I like, um, but the writing is definitely strong enough for me to go through and see how issue number three goes. Um, we are still dealing with the three main storylines, the Doctor trying to figure out what is causing this evolution, and then the two characters that are running around that have uh, kind of happened on to uh, terrible things happening with uh, evolutions going crazy. Um, if you're into horror, if you're into um, kind of a, a horror crime procedural kind of feel to it, because it has kind of that feel to it, uh, definitely pick this up. Um, if you're looking for something new, give it a try. Next up, we've got Marvel 2-in-1. You remember that book where two characters would team up? Well, this time it is the Human Torch and the Thing. I believe it will always be the Human Torch and the Thing. We'll see if they do that. But it is written by Chip Zdarsky, who's a fun-loving guy. And what I really enjoyed about this is this first issue was way more serious than your average Zdarsky issue. And I kind of liked it. I liked that he stretched his wings and he did it. But I also like the fact that he's like, this is more serious tone. We're setting up, you know, we're going to talk about what happened to Reed Richards and Sue Richards and the kids. We're going to talk about that they're not there. We're going to talk about how that affects Ben and how that affects Johnny. Um, Johnny is going through some sort of crisis about it. He's, he's definitely affected by it. It's affecting his mood. It's affecting his, he's not suicidal, but he's just doing dumb things all the time. And Ben and he, and he I haven't been seeing eye to eye. Uh, Doom shows up as Doom will, and he presents Ben with an orb that Reed left for him, and it's giving him instructions on what to do should they die. And it's the setup for the story. If you like Silly Zadarsky, it's not an issue one. I'm sure he'll show up, but this is a more serious tone book, and it's pretty good. All right, my pick of the week, technically, because um, I tend to do Batman stuff together. Batman. Metal! Metal! Issue number four. I was ready this time. <laughs> and Batman issue number 37. Not metal! Uh, metal. Um, it's been a decent series so far. Uh, this one, everyone is losing. They're still losing. Everyone is still losing. And um, we're only, I think, two, two more issues left. I think it's only a six-issue six series. Um, everyone's losing. And... Uh, we don't really know how this is going. Um, all of our main characters are split all over, all over the multiverse, and they are uh, all finding different um, obstacles to what they're trying to get to, with, which is the nth metal. And um, yeah, every single one of them has lost. And so we, it, it's been that it's been that way, man. This has been a dark book. I mean, everybody has. There's never there, nobody's won anything yet. Um, so it's kind of interesting that at least now there's not even a little bit of glimmer of hope. Um, usually by these six issues, eight issue series, you've seen some kind of turnaround or at least the path to the turnaround. And we haven't seen that here. Uh, it's bad. And uh, Batman issue number 37, they are double dating. I love everything about this book. Uh, the dialogue between the couples and the dialogue between each other as they are going on a double date to the fair and it's superhero night and you can't get in without a costume so Bruce and Clark switch costumes and Clark is walking around as Batman with glasses and <laughs> Batman is walking around as Superman at the banter back and forth how they just genuinely don't want to be here uh, they hate being on this double date yet the women 
love it and are having such a great time and the and the the dialogue is fantastic and this is definitely one of the best written comics uh dc has right now do yourself a favor if you haven't done it already at least go back a couple issues um and start reading on this arc uh leading up to the proposal and then go on from there the series has been phenomenal and it is um the best dc book that i'm currently reading all right, time for my pick of the week, and to no one's surprise, because of the time of year it is, it's Hellboy, Crump and Schnuff. <laughs> it's Hellboy versus Krampus. I love Krampus. I love everything about the mythology, just evil goat kind of Santa thing, whipping children who suck. I'm all about that. Let's make that more of a thing. But anyways, Hellboy goes to an area where Krampus has lured him, and Krampus is like, I've been around forever. You think it's bad, you being on Earth? This is terrible. I hate it here. Kill me. I want you to kill me in battle so I can die. Um, Hellboy is just trying to release the souls of all the tortured children that Krampus has killed over all the years. This is not much of a thinking kind of issue, although the setup's great. It reads really quick. It's just violence. Hellboy fighting Krampus. I love that it. it's everything I wanted. Krampus looked terrifying. And he got more interesting as the fight went on. He kind of changes with the fight. Really cool book. I love it. Let's keep hitting children with sticks and things. Right, America? <laughs> All right, guys. Merry Christmas, Kwanzaa, whatever it is you do. Hanukkah. There's probably more things that have been invented. Um, enjoy those. And click up here for a thing. And over here's a thing. And... Wax on and wax off and paint the fence. Sweep the... He did another thing. Sand the floor. Sand the floor. Sweep the leg, Johnny. Mm. That's it. <laughs>